This is Hong and welcome to my tea vlog. Um, so I've been an avid tea drinker for about a dozen years and he just came to me about uh, a few days ago, my friend Sam, and you know, he said, why don't you start a tea vlog? So I said, mm, maybe that's a good idea. So what I'm going to do today is a very simple setup to try to show you how we're going to make the proper Chinese oolong tea. Well, as you can see in front of me, I don't really have a professional set here. I mean, I'm here in the States, I don't have everything. And I hope that I can show you a better set when I'm back in Beijing. So you can see there's, a, you know, I have a pot. I'm not going to use it today. Um, well, I have something like a bowl. I guess I can drink from it, but not really. What we're really going to use today are just some very simple um, stuff. Here we have the tea bowl, and this is what we're going to use to brew the tea. And this is what we call in Chinese, uh, cha hai or sea of tea, but I guess we can call it something like a tea distributor. What we'll do is we'll pour the tea to here and then distribute to different cups. And in today's case, I'm going to use this borrowed Persian teacup simply because it's transparent and you can see everything kind of nicely here. Okay, so let's get started. So the first step, involved, of course, is to choose your tea. And for today's purpose, I'm going to use this um, Wulong tea from the northern Fujian province. Let's open the can. And as you can see from here, um, the leaves, well, maybe, maybe we can see it properly this way. The leaves are kind of darkish, this type of oolong tea is produced in northern Fujian um, under the broad category of yan cha, or I guess we can translate as the mountain tea or the rock tea. The specific flavor of this particular yan cha is called bai guo xiang, or the fragrance of 100 fruits. So we're going to see whether it actually lives up to the name. Now, first you have the tea and you place the tea in the bowl right here. People would ask me how much tea would you usually put? The answer is more than you think. I guess people here in the United States would measure the amount of tea they put by teaspoons. And they would ask me, so how many teaspoons would you put? Well, this is actually very difficult because each tea obviously has different shapes and how much you can hold in a single teaspoon is actually different. So for our case, the oolong tea, what you have to do for a bowl this size is you want to make sure about, you know, fill it up to about one fourth to a third, depending on how strong you want the tea to be. So let's add it up to about one fourth. Okay, so that's how much tea we're going to put in the bowl. So the next step, of course, is to boil water. And this part is actually a part that I would highly recommend that you use some sort of a mineral water, such as the one here, or spring water, because um, using hard tap water will actually harm the taste of your tea. So while boiling water, the thing that you have to pay attention to is the water temperature. Now, to make proper oolong tea, it is highly recommended that you use boiling water that is 100 degrees Celsius. And usually when people see that you the water kettle, you know, you're, you're seeing steam, you think that it's boiling, it's actually not. What you have to do is you have to wait for about 15 to 30 more seconds. This way, the entire body of water in the kettle is actually boiling. So let us wait here. Okay, now the time's about right, the water's ready. So once the water's ready and handy, you can start to make tea. Now, we brew teas by different infusions. The thing to remember is that in the proper brewing of Chinese oolong tea, you always throw out the first infusion. In Chinese, we call it xi cha, or washing the tea. But of course, while you're you know, waiting for the first infusion to be washed out, you can kind of smell the aroma. It is actually fairly good. It does smell like the 100 fruits, like the tea claims to be. So in 10 seconds time, what you do is you do this. Now, make sure that when you let the tea out, um, you use up every single drop of it. Otherwise, whatever water remains in a bowl will actually hurt the taste of the next infusion. 
So this is the first infusion, which is the infusion that we're not going to drink. The customs in the Chinese tea making is that now you pour this to different people's cups. We're going to use a Persian cup here just because it is transparent. And you pour it out. Now it is very nice and handy if you have something like a tea tray here, because the tea tray has two layers and all the water that comes out will actually go to the second tray on the bottom. This way it's very easy for cleaning. But if you don't have something like this, it's all right. You can simply pour out the tea in a sink or something similar. Okay, so now we have the first infusion out of the way. We can actually try to have the tea. So you first pour water again. The time of infusion is usually about 15 seconds, give or take. It actually doesn't matter, it depends on your taste. But make sure you don't brew for over one minute in the second infusion, otherwise it's going to taste really strong. So after 15 seconds, you pour the tea out, and you can start to distribute to your friends and yourself. Now, make sure that you distribute to your friends first and yourself last. So there we have it, the, the second infusion of the 100 fruit fragrance tea. Mm, not too bad. Now, doesn't it seem a little bit wasteful that we pour so much tea, but only make so little of it? The magic of the proper Chinese oolong tea is that you can make as many as five, seven, or even 15 infusions, depending on the quality of tea. For our particular kind of tea, I would say that, you know, we can probably infuse about five or six times without a problem. What you do for the third infusion onward is that you add about 15 to 20 seconds or 30 seconds, depending on your taste, to each and every infusion. So if you remember, in the second infusion, we brew the tea for about 15 seconds. So now, in the third infusion, we're going to brew for about 30 seconds. All right, time's up. As you can see from the tea here, the color is slightly lighter than the previous infusion, but actually the taste is going to be better because for oolong tea, usually you get the best taste in about the third to the fourth infusions. Yeah, we make that sound. This is how you drink tea in China. You gotta make sure that the entirety of your tongue, especially the lower part, can taste the tea. Mm. Not too bad. And of course, to continue, and of course, to continue the process, for example, in our next try, the fourth infusion, you simply add 15 more seconds. So about 45 seconds here. And the next one will be about a minute, the one after, a minute and 15 seconds, and so on and so on. So this is a typical way of how you can make oolong tea in China. Now, of course, the reason why we do this is because we believe that this is one way to get the best taste out of your tea. And more importantly, though, the reason why we, you know, 
make this whole seemingly complicated process is to create time and space. That is to say, to create rooms for conversation. The whole point about drinking tea is not to savor the taste just for yourself or to get enough caffeine to last for the day, but to create a social environment for conversations, for sharing of thoughts and sharing of ideas, and maybe just sharing your everyday life. So again, this is Hong, and thank you for watching my tea vlog.